SAT 4120, Serious Gaming and Simulations. Week 11, Assessment, video clip 3 of 3. I'm Professor Bill Kapralos, and over the next few minutes, we'll continue our discussion on assessing the learning in serious games. However, prior to doing so, here's the list of analysis questions for this particular video clip. Number one, what other factors can have an effect on learning within a serious game? Number two, can these other factors be measured, and if so, how? Number three, what is in-game assessment? And finally, number four, what are the benefits of in-game assessment? Measuring the learning that has taken place within a serious game or simulation, or in other words, assessment, is not an easy task. Although assessment can provide a measure of learning, there are many other factors that can indirectly lead to learning itself. More specifically, when we consider serious games and simulations, they captivate and engage players, learners, for a specific purpose, such as to develop new knowledge or skills. And when we consider students, strong engagement has been associated with strong academic achievement. And therefore, the level of engagement may also be potentially used as an indicator to the learning that a serious game or simulation is capable of. Let's examine engagement in a little more detail. According to Brockmeyer, engagement is a combination of four factors. One, immersion. Two, presence. Three, flow. And four, psychological absorption. As we previously discussed, immersion is essentially the feeling of being inside a virtual world. Presence can be seen as the sense of being within the virtual world, very similar to immersion. Psychological absorption is a disposition or personality trait in which the person becomes absorbed in his or her mental imagery, particularly fantasy. And finally, flow itself is the mental state of operation in which a person performing an activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment in the process of the activity itself. In essence, flow is characterized by a complete absorption in what one does. It was proposed by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi back in the early 90s and is widely referenced across a variety of fields, including gaming and virtual reality. According to Csikszentmihalyi, flow is a completely focused motivation. It is a single-minded immersion and represents perhaps the ultimate experience in harnessing the emotions in the surface of performing and learning. In flow, the emotions are not just contained and channeled, but positive, energized, and aligned with the task at hand. The hallmark of flow is the feeling of spontaneous joy, even rapture, while performing a task. And flow has been described as a deep focus on nothing but the activity itself not even oneself or one's emotion. Various tools have been developed to provide a measure of engagement, including the Game Engagement Questionnaire, which was developed by Brockmeyer and his colleagues in 2009. The Game Engagement Questionnaire is a scientifically validated self-assessment tool that has been shown to be a reliable metric for determining a player's engagement within a video game. The questions within the Game Engagement Questionnaire were chosen to ensure that they were easy to understand by gamers and non-gamers alike, and that they were statistically related to the concepts being examined. Through empirical studies, the game enge engagement questionnaire was validated statistically and indicates that player engagement is a quantifiable measure using this tool. Another self-reporting questionnaire for measuring player engagement is known as the game experience questionnaire. In addition to questionnaires, physiological responses such as heart rate, skin conductance, cortisol, amongst others, can also provide an indication of a player's engagement within a video game, and such physiological measures can easily be made with over-the-shelf hardware that is currently available. We now focus our attention on in-game assessment. As pointed out by Becker and Parker in 2011, serious games and games in general can and generally do contain in-game tests of effectiveness. More specifically, as players progress through the game, they accumulate points and experience which makes the next stages and levels of the game easier, and therefore the player should score higher if any learning has been imparted. Using this as a premise leads to what's known as the level-up protocol of testing, whereby players are divided into two groups, 
with one of the two groups beginning the game at the first level, for example, and the other beginning at the second level. If the group that started at the first level does significantly better than the other group, this is attributed to a successful game that is capable of imparting the intended instructional material, at least with respect to the first level. Incorporating in-game assessments takes us away from the predominant classic form of assessment, comprised of questionnaires, questions and answers, etc., or in other words, the typical test, which does nothing more than test our memory rather than measure an understanding and or creative use of the acquired knowledge. Albeit, this can be very difficult to do. Furthermore, such testing can interrupt and negatively affect the learning process. In-game assessment provides us the opportunity to take advantage of the medium itself and employ alternative, less intrusive, and less obvious forms of assessment, which could and should become a game element itself. So in other words, now we're incorporating the assessment within the game itself, and the player may not necessarily be aware of the fact that they're actually being assessed. When assessment is integrated into the game itself, and the player is not aware of it, this is known as stealth assessment. Stealth assessment is a new but growing area of serious gaming, and there is plenty of opportunity here. This brings us to the end of our discussion on assessment. And below are the list of four references that were made throughout this particular video clip. These references are actually quite good, and I strongly recommend you take a further look at them. This also leads us to our list of analysis questions. Number one, how does fun fit into effectiveness? Does more fun translate to more learning? Number two, what are some of the problems with in-game assessment? And finally, number three, how would you go about incorporating stealth assessment within a serious game? In other words, describe the process for developing stealth assessment. This is the end of this particular video clip. Thank you.